The way in which first-line healthcare is delivered in the UK has changed. While most is still delivered through local GP surgeries, the organisations responsible have grown, and the workforce providing that care has grown with it. But because the number of actual GPs has not kept pace with rising demand and an ageing population, more and more allied health professionals are helping out. This has its advantages, like giving patients better access to different skill sets. But as our research shows, it presents a lot of problems too. <laughs> Only a modest proportion of problems can be easily matched to a specific health professional. GP practices are the point of first contact for a limitless range of health problems, many of them coexisting. So, getting the right patient to the right practitioner for the right treatment at the right time can be extremely difficult. The first challenge is the way that problems are identified. Receptionists are a gateway to appointments, but they are not usually medically trained. Also, they can only work with what the patient actually tells them, which may only be a small part of their story. Miscommunication or misinterpretation at this point can very easily send patients in the wrong direction. Secondly, there are challenges in identifying who the right practitioner might be. Practitioners' job titles are only part of the story. Their unique journey through training, skills and experience can all affect the scope of their practice, and their ability to deal with different problems will change as their careers progress. The sheer number of potential problems that patients bring can never be fully captured in the simple lists and matrices of tasks and skills that practices generate to guide non-clinical reception staff. It can take time for lists to catch up when staff gain additional skills, and because patients only have limited descriptions of what each type of practitioner can do, it's hardly surprising that they sometimes expect them to be able to do things they aren't trained, qualified or permitted to do. So, what are the solutions? To achieve the maximum benefit, practices need to work on how they distribute work and manage the skills of their existing workforce, because this has a direct impact on how they provide care. Our study says they need to consider action in three key areas – staff training, organisational preparation and greater flexibility. Practices need to work on getting categorisation right, which means making sure that reception staff know what all practitioners can do and by supporting practitioners to gain additional skills so they add to what they can do. Practices need to gather information about what newer members of staff can do and create space for them to build trust as they get to know how their colleagues work. This can mean changing patterns of work by scheduling regular meetings and reducing the number of pre-booked appointments with senior practitioners. This provides space for them to advise and supervise colleagues, but without squeezing too much work into their schedules or causing delays. Some mismatching is inevitable, but practices need to look closely at why mismatching happens and think about how they can lessen the impact of mismatching. Sometimes an informal reminder may be enough, or a formal staff meeting may be needed to make changes. In practical terms, work schedules that have designed in opportunities for practitioners to ask for advice makes resolving the mismatch a lot smoother and is more helpful for patients. It is essential that enough members of the team have generalised knowledge and expertise, so we need to train and retain enough GPs to provide the levels of supervision and expert advice that other practitioners need. Making sure that all practitioners can get expert advice when needed helps to inspire confidence in patients and encourages them to accept new types of practitioner. It's a big challenge, and these challenges will only increase with the employment of new practitioners via the Additional Roles Reimbursement Scheme for Primary Care Networks, when practitioners work at a number of different sites and are less embedded in a single practice team. By looking at these processes more closely and making sure we get them right, we can improve outcomes for every kind of patient and every kind of problem. <laughs>